do you feel like um do you kind of feel like they they view you guys as humans or just kind of like moving parts that we just want to get them out and start the demolition process um i don't know how they view me they to me they treat us worse than animals because they put they have put us all in one box and we're all not the same some of us are trying to look for places to go i've been looking since august i've had other people looking for me as well so they can check the record I'm just worried now about how many times my credit has been ran, how many points me and my my 19 year old our credit score probably has went down because we've had our credit ran so many times. No one's thinking about that. So maybe by the time I find some place that I really want to go, my credit score may not be acceptable by then because it's been running since August. And also, I just want to be clear because the housing authority and if you're watching, sorry, but you know, they, they've said, oh, no, we've been helping the residents of this and that. Tell me how many times they helped you go to, a, go to an open house or gave you information about open houses or tra helped you with transportation anywhere or uh, met with you to, for your concerns. H how has been the process uh, for the last – this has been going on since August? Well, um, the Housing Authority hasn't met with me not one time to try and do anything. Even though they know that I have a disability, they have not showed up one time. Not once. I've been to the relocation specialist, but then they had a group of relocation mobility counselors that started in February, and they've done more help than the housing authority has for me and my ca my case right now. And, you know, a lot of the people here, uh, speaking of Mike Pence, so when Mike Pence was governor, Eric Holcomb was the lieutenant governor. Mike Pence refused to declare this an emergency disaster zone. Uh, citing, uh, we gave you, I think he said, we gave you $100,000 or something like that, which is pennies for what this needs. Um, but Holcomb, Pence, since he couldn't be bothered to visit a, a lead poisoned uh, black and Latino community, he sent Holcomb. When Holcomb became governor uh, in January, to his credit, he declared a, a d an emergency disaster. However, the fine print is most of the disaster money is going to demolish this complex, not to your medical bills to um, transportation costs, to moving costs. Uh, th where we sit right now, do you even know if you could even move this furniture? I won't be taking anything. I can't take it because my house tested at, when the EPA did the testing, we was at a 32,000 in lead and 800 in arsenic inside of my home. So I can't take anything. We'll just basically be taking our TVs and what's been packed since September. Everything else, I have to trash it. Everything from beds, clothes. Um, the other day we threw out maybe about nine bags of clothes that we just had to get rid of because I'm scared to donate it to anybody with the lead and stuff that's in my unit. And uh, I mean, if we're being honest, it's not like you're a wealthy woman. So it's, it's not a simple thing to buy new furniture and to moving costs and, you know, forget the money, but your friend, your children, new school, having to uh, and by the way, literally a new school for two months. Um, so where you know, they've never been here. They've only lived in Indiana. They don't know anyone there. You don't have family there. No, I don't have any family in Illinois. Not where they're moving me. <laughs> I don't have any family there. And you know, just uprooting my children from what I consider a safe environment. I don't think it would be safe to move them, because we would be like um, new to the area. So. The fight, they may get picked on, fights, you know, seeing we from Indiana as soon as, I'm just worried about our safety, period. Because we've never lived in Illinois, never. And I, I left uh, the mayor's number uh, for you on Facebook. Uh, the mayor and his office, they've gotten a couple calls today because I put his number up on my Facebook. Um, they're done for the day. So if you want to call, start at 9 a.m. tomorrow, I'll be going down there. But the mayor has the, has the power to extend this and to not hastily move you guys mm -hmm. for two months uh, and maybe, dare I say, to have the housing authority actually help you find a place. Mm -hmm. um, so what is your thoughts that the mayor is basically kind of burying his head in the sand um, and just letting you guys basically, I would say, rot? <laughs> I'm just really upset with him because I, I had more respect for him thinking that he would make the housing authority do the right thing. I really thought that he would do the right thing. 
you know, giving us a couple more months for our kids to get out of school. They start I step testing in either the middle of April or March, I mean, or May. Um, how are our kids going to get out here? They're not offering a bus. A bus is going to come all the way to the south side of Chicago to pick up my one child. You know, I just thought they would do the right thing. I thought that, you know, he would at least speak with us and see things our way. You know, at least hear us out. That's all I want. I would love to just have a one-on-one -on -one with him to explain to him and get him to see things from a different point of view. Because listening to housing isn't getting my point across or showing you what I'm going through on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, wait a minute, because I thought I live in an America. Uh, America? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I confuse that. Uh, doesn't the mayor, like, represent you and you pay his bills? I'm not sure what I do for the mayor or what he does for me because I haven't seen anything being done for me and the people of West Calumet. I saw us be treated less than human or feeling as if we are less than because of where we live. I got some comments off of Facebook about, um, well, why are they still out there? They knew they only had a couple more months to go, but some of those women that are making those comments, they still live with their parents. Try making it on your own and then come and judge us and see what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis living out here. Or all the humiliation we've gotten since we moved out here. You know, they're just looking at the story right now. Let's go back 13 years and see what I went through with Housing Authority from day one. It didn't just start these few months ago. I've had problems since 2008 back and forth with housing, you know. So, yes, we all want to get out. Yes, we all would like to have somewhere else to go, but... You stay where you can afford to stay so your children can have a roof over their head. I can't be homeless. And I can't move outside of my means where I can support me and my children. And being on disability and being on a fixed income, a lot of people don't understand what I go through on a month-to-month -month basis. I don't apply. I can't um, receive food stamps to feed me and my children. I have to pay out of pocket. They don't get that. Some people get food stamps. Some people have different things that they can rely on. I can't rely on food stamps. I was getting $67 for me and two kids when the past governor um, lowered the, the wages, the, the income. I don't qualify for food stamps. You mean Mike Pence? Yes, our vice president. So he lowered it from what? I don't know what he lowered it from, but my income, I don't fit into the bracket to receive the $67 in food stamps. Don't and very generous in the first place, $67. Yeah, $67 to feed me and two children. That's per week or month? Per month. That's all, $67. But he could find the billions of dollars he gave in tax cuts to corporations and wealthy people here in Indiana. Um, so, you know, I think what gets lost in this whole discussion, because I'm kind of sarcastic and sassy, is people's lives have been somewhat ruined. I mean, I remember when I came here, I mean, this was more than just where people lived. Like, many people lived in this complex their whole lives. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew everybody, you know? Yes. And uh, it becomes kind of a family. Mm -hmm. um, and kids play with each other here, mm -hmm. which is scary because you see the signs, don't play, don't play in the dirt no. now. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw, you know, I, I, I spoke with older people who were like, just ki let me die here. They don't want to be moved. Uh, can you kind of talk about the emotional cost uh, of all this? Well, I'm not trying to make you cry, but I'm not going to cry today. Um, we were a family. You know, they've separated and took arms and legs of our families. We looked out for each other. My neighbors from across the street, I, I cried when they left because we had really organized a bond. I'm going to feel sad leaving my neighbor from across the street. I felt sad when my neighbor next door moved out. But I was happy for them. I was happy that they found somewhere to go and that they were going somewhere to better their lives for them and their children. But the ones that are left behind, like me and many others, I don't know. I have a feeling I'm numb now. I don't have any feelings. But I don't want to move to Chicago either. I just don't want to put my children in that type of danger. Every day I'm looking on the news, seeing kids being shot down for no reason, just walking home from school. Or wearing their own color. You know, out here I didn't have to worry about them. I stayed in my neighborhood, I stayed in my community, and I, I didn't have any problems like that. But moving me to somewhere where I'm, I'm not even used to, 
I don't even know how to get there. If something was shut down, I wouldn't even know a way to get to my home where they're trying to place me. You know, and they need to take in consideration that a lot of us don't want to be in Chicago. At the meeting last night, a lot of people that lived in Chicago didn't want to go back. So if these people don't want to go back, what makes you think I even want to try out there? Well, actually, it should be said that a lot of people that came here fled Chicago because of the violence. Correct. That's what a lot of them said. They want to give their children a chance. And that's me. I'm always looking out for my children. It's not about me. It's about my children. I've lived a portion of my life. You know, my sickness may take over. I may be disabled years from now or months from now. Who knows what my body is going to go through. But I can't keep being under the stress that housing has placed over my head, not knowing from day to day where me and my kids can go. I just want to pause for a second because it's so important to stress this. Listen, I'm not a doctor. You're not. But listen, if somebody moves and you're pretty much healthy until age 27, and you move to a complex, and at 29 you have a hysterectomy, uh, you fall into menopause, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, we've spoken. Some, some, days, some days you can't get out of bed. No. So they, I don't want to be dramatic, but they, they have taken a lot of your functionality mm -hmm. because of gross negligence, mm -hmm. gross just disregard, mm -hmm. and now they're pretty much telling you to figure it out. That, that's what it comes down to. That's the way it's been since day one. Um, moving out here, um, I thought I was doing something great for me and my kids. I thought, you know, being able to be on my own and just provide a safe environment for me and my kids. Um, some people don't know what it's like to keep starting over. Um, when I first moved out here, I had a flood in my other unit, hot water tank rupture. They moved me from there to here. Same thing happens here, hot water tank rupture. Lost that furniture, saved up two years, got what I wanted. Now here I am again. Nobody's repaying me for anything. Nobody's replacing our furniture. Nobody's replacing our bedding. They're not even replacing pots and pans, toothbrush, soap, face towels, bath towels, basic things, water. They don't care. I've came to the conclusion that no one in the housing authority has a heart to care. Nobody in the city of East Chicago that has any say so over what happens with us cares. They haven't reached out. You're wrong. They care about covering their ass. That's what this is about. It's cover your ass. The city blames the EPA. The EPA blames the city. And it's the hot potato and nobody has to take responsibility and who's the actual victim. And you know, I'll say and, you know, the trolls will say, oh, you're not a journalist, you're a Bernie bro, and all these things. Listen, if you can't just see what's right in front of you, which is called injustice, and do something about it, then, you're, then you shouldn't be in journalism or anything else. I mean, some stories are just very clear <laughs> what's going on. Uh, you don't see these kinds of situations uh, in upper, upper middle class areas. And uh, for the people who say, don't stop making everything a race issue, well, if you find me neighborhoods, this is happening, the people are white, I'll, I'll, I'll run around naked because I'm not seeing it. I will say in Flint, there are uh, a lot of low-income white people that have been affected too. But most of these areas are largely African-American, Latino, uh, with formerly middle-class people uh, and white people also. So, but the thing is, there is an element uh, of class and racism involved. Uh, I don't know what pressure the mayor has to get people out or what not, but you're literally talking about giving people two more months. Uh, and the, the cost of doing this, like you said, you, I mean, you don't have a personal assistant to figure out your Medicare pa Medicaid paperwork and all this stuff. So it's, that's, that's what the task in front of you is a little daunting. Yes. It's very daunting because no one is sitting down trying to explain to us what's going to happen once we move across state lines. Mm -hmm. No one's explaining to us and me and the other women out here, are we going to be able to move back across state lines and then be able to get our Medicaid and benefits back when we move back across the state lines. No one's telling us how long that's going to take and how long our children or are my doctors going to accept this insurance once I move to Illinois. 
because all my doctors are in Indiana. So what are we to do? What is the next step? Where is the plan from housing for us? What's going to happen? That's all I want to know. What, it, what, are, what are their plans for us? And what are they going to do with this land? Because it's contaminated. So who are you going to move out here? Who would want to live out here? While people are in such a rush for us to leave, 